In this lab, you're going to be working with a 7493 integrated circuit. Um, and what is that thing? You're probably saying to yourself, well, it is a four bit asynchronous counter. So this chip contains four JK flip flops within the chip, within one chip. And you can see here it is counting from zero to F in hexadecimal or from zero to 15, if, for those of you who like to think in base 10. All right, let's take a look inside the chip, shall we? If you could look inside a 7493 integrated circuit, it would look like this on the right. It would contain four JK flip-flops. Now here in this diagram, they're arranged vertically. I know you're used to seeing JK flip-flops kind of arranged horizontally, but it's, it's the same thing. And notice that the output of each of these cues goes into the next clock. That's what makes it count, right? It's an asynchronous counter. The output of this cue goes to the next clock. Three of them are connected like that. One of them is not. For some reason, they designed this chip. I guess maybe they wanted this JK flip-flop to be able to be used for a different purpose. So the output of this queue does not go into the next clock. If you want this to function like a four-bit counter, you've got to take a, a wire externally, like I did here on the left, and, and output it from QA into the next clock. That's input B. So I, and again, you just take a wire from here, and put it into the next clock. And now I have my four bit asynchronous counter. So input A is, is the external clock. Um, down here at the bottom, th this is how you reset the thing. This is how you make it start counting. Now, this particular chip can only start counting at zero. Why can it only start counting at zero? Because the output of this goes to the clear on all of these chips, right? So this is a NAND gate right here. If I send in ones, it'll output a zero to all of these clears, it'll reset this thing from zero, start counting at zero. Uh, I don't know why they used a NAND gate here either. They could have just used a NOT gate because really I, all I need, all I want is a one uh, going in to send out a zero to clear all these things. So usually what people do with this chip also is one of these, one of these inputs they send to power. And that way, all I have to do, let me just say this again, all I have to do is send in a one to one of these things and it'll make the thing start counting at zero. So as soon as you send in a one, right? Just imagine what's going on. As soon as I send in a one, a zero will come out of here and start this thing counting at zero. All right, let's take a look at what it looks like connected in the next slide. This is a 7493 integrated circuit, of course. Again, that's what we're talking about in this whole video. And this one I have connected so it'll count from zero to nine. And you can see I can count through here seven, eight, nine. Now, as soon as I get to 10, it'll reset. So really it's zero to nine and resets on 10. You know how that works. You never see that last count. It resets on that last count. Well, of course, these particular chips, they always start counting at zero. You know that. And of course it starts counting at zero because as soon as I get a, a one, this is an AND gate here. As soon as I get all ones going into this AND gate, it'll send out a one to this reset, and we talked about this inside the chip, when you get a one into this reset, it'll clear all the flip-flops. So let's take a closer look at why it is counting up to nine and resetting on 10. So what makes this thing count up to nine and reset on 10? Well, that's these little knot gates here, these little inverters. So um, if we just look at this carefully, the, the uh, QA is the ones place. So let me just keep track of that. This is the ones place. Uh, QB is the twos place, right? This is all binary. This is the fours place and uh, QD is the eights place. So when the when I have a zero in the ones place, let me just write a zero right here. When I have a zero in the ones place, it's getting inverted. So that's going to send a one to this AND gate. When I have a one in the twos place, it'll send a one to the AND gate. When I have a zero in the fours place, it'll send a one, right? It's getting inverted to the AND gate. And when I have a one in the eights place, it'll send a one to my AND gate. So when I have zero, one, zero, one, or this is actually a 10 in binary, right? Uh, eight, uh, nine, 10, I'm sorry, it's a 10 in base 10. So when this count gets up to 10, it'll send a one to this AND gate, which will output a one and reset the count to zero. 
Or in other words, it resets on 10, but it counts up to nine. And this is something you should already be familiar with. So just by adjusting where you put these inverter gates, where you put these not gates, you can adjust the count range. You can make it count up to whatever you like from zero to 15, obviously. But again, these chips must start counting at zero. All right, one more slide. Okay, this is the last slide. I'm just gonna be very brief here. Uh, most of this course, we've been using small scale integrated circuits, right? Small scale integration. These are logic chips that are like NAND gates and AND gates and OR gates. Most of those chips contain less than 10 logic gates per chip. And now we have been using medium scale integrated circuits or medium scale integration. Um, the, the, the chips with the flip-flops, those are kind of on the border. They have maybe 10 logic gates or maybe 20 logic gates per chip, but adders and counters, and now we're working with counters, on a single chip, there is usually like between somewhere between 50 and 100 logic gates per chip. And in the uh, 7493 that we just looked at, I mean, that's probably like 50 or 60 logic gates per chip. Those are called medium scale integrated circuits. Um, we have, you actually have used some large scale integrated circuit chips. We, we programmed some things. I don't know if you remember programming that little board there. That's a large scale integration or large scale integrated circuit. And beyond that, of course, are, is very large and ultra large and giga large. Like your, your computer contains chips with tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions, probably millions of logic gates on a single chip. We're not going to get to that in this course, but this is a diagram that you should be kind of familiar with. And we're down here in, in this range in this course. Okay, that's it. Get to work.